All right. Um, let's see. We have two more weeks left. Um, there is no final in finals week. Uh, your final project is due. I changed the due dates on some of the assignments. Uh, I may have done that a little while ago. I don't remember exactly when, but take a look at the new due dates. Um, and, you know, we're on the home stretch. And really getting the project done is job one. So, you know, every class I'm going to start out, and I hope to remember to start out. And if I don't, please remind me. But I'm going to start out to ask you if you have any questions about either your project or any of the assignments that you're doing. In other words, I want to make sure that the stuff we've covered so far, um, you think you have a pretty good understanding of. So bring up the questions. If it's something that I think is better addressed, maybe on an individual basis in lab, we can do that then. But uh, if not, um, you know, there's a really good chance that any question you have might be relevant to other people in the class. So I will, you know, I'll probably address many of the questions uh, that I get in class. So does anyone have any questions or what's what, what is what is well, let me ask you this. I've spent a while since I've done this. What is uh, one thing that you still have trouble with, are confused about, however you want to put it? We can take a look at that. No one has anything that they're confused about. Yes. Actually, yes, Mr. Sellers. I'm trying to get um, Lab 7 done with Visual Studio Microsoft Access, and I keep running into problems. Well, what sort of problems do you run into? Oh, it's just that I keep getting help from people I know with this, and I keep they keep telling me to type in this and click on that, and every time I think I'm doing it right, I keep getting errors. Well, you know, there is one person in the room that has been doing this an awful long time, all right? And rather, and, and, and rather than asking people, whoever they may be, who may have had this class, who may have not have had this class, and may have picked up some things on their own or whatever, maybe you should ask me the questions. Okay. And then we'll get them straightened up. Um, you know, come to lab. That's what it's there for. Okay. You, know, you shouldn't have anything scheduled for that time. I mean, the lab is part of the class. So I know some people prefer not to come to lab and rather work on it um, on their own. But, and, and I'm okay with that if everything's going well. If it's not going well, then I hear comments like, well, I can't get this part done and it has been due a while. Well, it makes me wonder, like, why don't you show up for lab then? You know, so, and, and that goes for everyone. So by all means, if you have questions, you have problems, come to talk to me in lab. Um, there's a good group of people that do come to lab and I do my best to answer their questions and, and get them going. So. Um, you know, that's, I guess that's my advice and suggestions for everyone. Um, the one thing I get periodically, too, is I'll get someone to su uh, uh, submit something and say, well, I know this doesn't work, but here it is. Well, if it doesn't work, email me before you turn it in, right? The idea is when you turn it in, you think that it's done and it's complete. Now, you might be mistaken. Maybe there's something you forgot or whatever. But um, if there's something you know doesn't work, Turning it in is not the way to address it. The way to address it is to contact me and, and email me and, and so on. Okay. All right. Other questions? All right. Yes? Could we um, go over, I'm sorry, I'm not vocalizing this well. Um, when you are making a like, grid view mm -hmm. and um, under Fields, there's a bunch of those options like bound field, and edit, um, and dynamic, and image, and all those little things you can add. Can we go over what the differences are with those? I think I know what you mean. Let me let me let me start off, and we'll pull it up on the screen. And if it's not the thing, if it's not the right thing, then you can point and say, "No, I don't mean that. I mean something else." Okay. So let's do that. So let me download um, the assignment, not the assignment, the example, and we'll start making something from scratch.
I am going to look to see what this example is. Because I've, I've done, we've made grid views in almost all of the tables. Um, I guess we could, we could make some more. I'm just curious of what tables are in this database. specifically ask for images as well. So we can look. Um, well, I think I figured out what the images are for. It's just this other de the difference between dynamic and bound and edit template. I think okay. there are a few others there. One thing to keep in mind is that for a lot of these things, there's going to be a whole bunch of options. And more than likely, there's going to be like the two or three options that you're going to use most of the time. And then there's going to be um, the options that are there um, that you use under some unusual circumstances. So. What, I'll, what I aim to do when I look at this is I'll, I'll try to cover the things that you're probably most likely to use. Because to be honest, some of the lesser frequently options I, I probably haven't used or haven't used in ages. So let's pull up a, a grid view. And I know I have a grid view. I know this is. And I'll set this as the start page. And we'll play around with it a bit. All right, so here's our grid view. Um, now I want to I want to make a new grid view. I don't want to I don't want to mess around with this one. So I'll make a new page, and we'll just call it Test Grid. source over, drag my grid view over. Configure the state of source to give a list of everything in the pizza order table. And then bind this data source to the control. So, we'll run this and we'll get a listing of everything in the um, pizza order table. Just one order. All right. So, if we look at edit columns, I assume you mean these things up here. Yes. Okay. Um, Bound fields are fields that are going to come from your data source. So these are the ones you're most likely to use. For example, if I deleted order type ID, or I think I deleted, well, what did I delete? If 
I delete uh, order type ID and then I run this, it's not there anymore, of course. To add it back in, I would go to edit columns and I would pick order type ID and add it in. Because that's the thing that's bound to the data source. So if I go and run this, then I run it. And there it is again. So to add something from the data source, you would pick data bound field. Some of these other things are um, controls that you can put in to indicate um, certain things. If there's a if there's a true or false uh, if there's a true or false field. They're, they're, they're visual ways to represent data in your control, all right? So, for example, um, and I'm going to go and redo this because I'm going to use the pizza table. I guess I didn't have to delete it. that has an image associated with it. Remember, by default, the way this works. By the way, by default, the way this works is everything is shown as a text box, no matter what it is. All right? So, I'm going to go in, and I have a column for pizza image, which is actually the image name. All right, we're not storing actual images in the database. That is possible to do in some cases, but we're storing an image name instead. All right. Um, if you want a display different than the default, you can use one of those other things. So, for example, if I don't want the name of the image, but I want the actual image, I can go in and create an image control. So, I'll go in here, edit columns, I'll delete the pizza image column, and I will put an image field and add it. All right. I then have to go through the process of saying, well, what is what field contains the name of the image from the database? Because when you create an image field, what you're saying is I have an image and the name of it is in my data source. So the data image URL field is going to come from the pizza image. And then it's going to be formatted. This is very similar to the link formatting. If there's any sort of formatting that occurs, for example, mine is not simply that image. It's in a folder called images. So I'll do images slash and then curly brace zero. And that'll say use this field as the image name and tack it onto the end of images slash. So now if I go and run this, we should see the actual image, at least for that one pizza that we have the image for. All right? So that's the image field. Now, the other ones, I'm not going to go and demonstrate them. If you need them for your project, by all means, go ahead and, and, and do that. But they allow other ways to represent the data. For example, you could represent a checkbox. A checkbox would be for Boolean data, right? If you had a field that was true or false, yes or no, you could make a checkbox field. <clears throat> and then instead of saying true or false, it would have um, a yes or no. Let's go and do that. Um, Let's go and add to this table a Boolean field. Um, what can we call this? Um, I'll just, I have no imagination today, so I'll call it Test Boolean. How about Favorite Pizza? Favorite, yeah, there you go. Yeah. No, it's not. I like that. Favorite. All right, 
so then I'll go into this table and I'll enter this and I'll say this one, this one. In reality, they would all be favorites unless they had onions on it, but um, we'll just pick some of these just to show that. All right, so this will also be a good case to talk about what happens. What's our select statement say? Our select statement says, give me everything in that specialty pizza. So I should be selecting now that. If I go here and try to choose that column, notice that it doesn't show there under bound fields. It doesn't show there under bound fields because I created this before that field was in there. So if I want that now to be in the grid view and be available in the grid view, I have to go and I have to say refresh. The problem is, is when I refresh, I'm going to lose any of my customization. And so therefore that image field is no longer going to be an image field. I'm going to have to redo it. Small price to have to pay. I went and did that. And now I have that as uh, a checkbox. By default, it made it a checkbox. All right. Um, I can go back and make pizza image um, and, and add that back in as an image column. I did not want to do that. Checkbox field knows it's under favorite. It was smart enough to know that that was that. So image field I'm going to add and I'll do the same thing. Pizza image, images slash, curly bracket zero. And if we run this, then it's going to be working again. And the ones that were checked as favorite are going to be checked as favorite. All right, some of the other things on there. Hyperlink field, we've reviewed that one already. That's where you can make a where you can make a data-driven hyperlink field. Alright? In other words, typically you're going to use that so that when you click on an item in this row, it takes you to a page and shows you more information about that row. Typically you're going to pass at the very least the key of the table so that the second page can know which one you clicked on. Image field, button field, that's about the same thing. You can create a button that like instead of a link, um, if you wanted to click on that to say edit or whatever, you could create a button. Command fields are, we could put in, um, this, this is what gets sort of added automatically if we make this editable, right? We get a, a command field for edit, update, and delete, select, delete, all those things. So those are the little links that show up that say, do you want to um, edit this? Do you want to delete it? And so on. Template field, we talked about those. That is where you go in and you want to write your own code for this. A real good example in this case would be for the order type, right? For the order type, right now it's showing me a type ID. Um, that is going to be meaningless to a user. What is order type one? What is order type two? One of them is pickup and one of them is delivery. Do I remember which? Absolutely not. All right. And no one's going to remember which. So therefore, what you need to do is you need to display maybe a drop down instead. Um, so I would convert that to a template column. And I would make it in read only mode that the drop down was disabled. So I couldn't change it in read only mode. So I could see the value in the drop down, but I wasn't able to edit it. Dynamic field, that I have to confess I'm not sure about. I do know one thing. If you pick those it oftentimes gives you an error. Let's do that. Let's go and pick, especially pizza name as a dynamic field, and add it. Now when I run this, yeah, I get this ugly error. All right? So, so clearly, that's not something that we want to do under a normal situation. If we go in and delete this, 
we got rid of that. Alright, so I know it's not an answer, but I also know that, and I'll try to give you a better answer than what I'm about to give you now, alright, but I also know that sometimes students um, only remember the highlights, alright, which is just fair. I mean, I only, like, if I go watch a sporting event, I don't remember every single play, I just remember the highlights, right, and students are the same way. So, unless you know what you're doing, don't use that dynamic field, all right? So, generally, you're not going to want to use it for the kind of stuff that we're doing. But that's not a satisfying answer, so let's Google it. ASP.NET grid view dynamic field. Use of dynamic field within column. I want the perfect use of example. The dynamic field class provides functionality that resembles the bound class field. However, because a dynamic field is used in dynamic data applications, you can take advantage of the following dynamic data features. That's no answer either. Let's try following these links. Oh, he just cut and pasted this. Automatic rendering the proper control based on the data type. Pro providing built-in validation based on a database schema. You can also add validation types by customizing the data model. Customizing data rendering for uh, individual fields using attributes in the data model. I would guess... Holding off on my answer here. Oh, by that bound field versus dynamic field. Allow me to ask a stupid field question. Represent. if we didn't understand the English version. My guess is that you use the dynamic field with something called uh, the MVC model, which is Model View Controller. And with that, you have a database model built into Visual Studio. A database model is similar to a database schema, but it would be built right within um, ASP.NET and you can put validation controls and stuff like that in. And if you do that, then you can use that column. All right? Uh, that, you can use that type of column. Uh, since we're not using that style, we would generally avoid that. That's my, that, I would say I am 
80% sure that that's the case. You do need a data model, though, which we have not been creating in our examples. So then you can use a dynamic, and that gives you some extra uh, additional functionality besides the simple data bound, which simply binds the data. So avoid that one. Any questions? Other questions? All right. I want to do, I want to talk about, um, depending on the time, I want to talk about um, a couple of different ways to represent the data. Remember in, uh, in, in, in the way that we're doing it, there's always two components. There's the data source, and then there's a visual representation of it. Um, I'm going to write on the board for a minute here. There's sort of a continuum. Let's talk about, if I want to show a list of records from the database, all right, what are our choices? And I'm going to write these along a continuum, all right? The easiest way to do it is with a grid view. All right? In all of these, you have a SQL data source. That's going to be bound to different things. But the simplest, most straightforward way to do it is the grid view. How do grid views work? They display a table. They always display a table. They give you, as a rule, text boxes. We did see a case where it gave us a checkbox unless we make template columns, all right? Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of flexibility here because we could want to show a list of data a bunch of different ways. What are different ways we might want to show a list of data? One way would be in a table of data. Okay, that's fair. We show rows and columns. What's another way that we might want to show a list of data? Pardon me? Uh, details view. Well, details, details view. Details view isn't a list of data so much. It's, it's, a, it's a list of columns to be sure, but it's going to be a list of columns about one row. What's different ways that we could show one row, multiple rows of data other than a table? to show a list of, which could be in some order, or it could be in no order, or unordered. Okay, yes? Well, like on, on like book websites, a lot of times so you show like the image of the book, and like it has like a little bit of information underneath it. Okay. HTML-wise, what is that? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess we could show a list of buttons, all right? Because, again, we're not talking about one thing. We're talking about a list of things. So let's imagine this being a list of all the books by an author. One thing we could do is we could show a table, all right? That would be a list of all the books for an author. The other thing could be we could show it as an ordered list or an unordered list. Right? We could show that, you know, um, let's do Stephen King because he's written a million books. We could show that one of his books is It and one of his books is The Shining and one of his books is um, The Shing, The Shining, The Shining, The Stand, and so on. 
All right, we can show an unordered list. All right, remember, when we're dealing with pre presenting the data, we're talking about the HTML, because that's what gets sent to the browser. That's what the user's gonna see. So grid views give you a table. How do you make it other than a table? You don't, all right? If you're using a grid view, you are getting a table. And that's one drawback of a grid view, is that it's very rigid, all right? Very rigid. You can customize it a little bit, all right? But you're, you're stuck with a table. What if I don't want a table? What if I want a list, which could be an unordered list or an ordered list? Maybe these are the best-selling books by Stephen King. We have sales data or something that says how many of each, of each book was sold. So we could show an ordered list that shows a ranking of certain things. So these are two different ways that we could show data other than a table. All right? Again, this is a list of data. This is a group of data. Another thing we could do is we could show panels. When you log into when you log into Canvas, what do you see? Do you see a table of all your classes? No. Do you see a list of your classes, either an unordered list or an ordered list? No. You essentially see panels. In a way, it's kind of like buttons, but it's, it's really, uh, it could be done as buttons, but it's really not. It's done probably as divs. It's just a series of divs or a series of articles or sections or whatever that have the different classes that you are enrolled in. Is that a table? No, that is not a table. So could I do that with a grid view? Absolutely not. Might I want to show the data this way? Sure. All right. So therefore, a grid view isn't going to give you this. All right, so the grid view on our continuum is the easiest way, but it's also the most rigid way, meaning you're sort of locked down. This is the way a grid view works. You don't like it? Tough. All right, you can customize it a little bit, but you really can't customize it a lot. Specifically, you can't make it something other than a table. All right, you can customize each cell of the table, but you can't make it something other than a table. All right, way down here at the other end, it's going to be the hardest. Well, it's going to be the most flexible is guess what? What? Any thoughts? Yes. Write your own expletive code. Right? You don't like the way the framework works? Great. Do it yourself. Right? You buy a paint-by-number painting, and you start painting it, and you say, I don't like the way this painting looks. Fine. Go buy a blank canvas and paint your own masterpiece. Right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. All right? What's the problem with that? Well, that's hard to do. Right? And this is the most flexible. You can get it exactly the way you want because you don't have that stupid framework interfering with your creative genius. All right? However, it's the hardest. All right? You're going to run into this dilemma anytime you work with the framework. So what I'm saying about this isn't just true about ASP.NET. The specifics are true, uh, are only ASP.NET. Only ASP.NET gets grid views. But if we were talking, if this was the Android class that I'm teaching, I could be talking about a recycler view over there and write my own expletive code. All right? 
I, if I was in a iPhone class, I could be talking about a Apple list view. I forget what it's called. All right, or writing your own code. So anytime you have a framework, you have this options or dilemmas. The, you have pieces of the framework that do something for you, but they do it for you in a prescribed manner, which may be okay. If it's a good framework, that's going to work a lot of the time. But there's always going to be exceptions where you might have to write your own expletive code. All right? Write your own hacking code. How about that? Write your own hacking code. All right. In ASP.NET, there's a couple of options in between the two, though. All right? So you're not just stuck with use a grid view or do it yourself. There is a data list. And there is a repeater. Okay? These fit somewhere in between the continue in the continuum. And again, this isn't proportional. Writing your own code would probably be like over here, whereas these would probably be over there. With a data list, you have a little more flexibility, but a little more work is on you, right? With a repeater, you have a little more flexibility, but even more work is on you. And then finally, with writing your own code, all the work is on you. So that would be another way to look at this. We could have these little mini graphs. The solid is going to be how much work the framework does. Right. The dash is going to be how much you do. With the grid view, framework does a lot of the work. You do a little bit. With writing your own code, framework doesn't do anything, maybe a tiny bit. You do most of it. With these other solutions, with the data list, framework might do that much. You do that much. With a repeater, maybe the framework does that much, and you do that much, right? Hope you understand what I mean. Either way, it's 100% of the work's going to get done, right? Someone has to do it, right? The choices are you or the framework. So if you let the framework do it, you're stuck with the way the framework, quote, wants to do it. The, pre, pre, uh, the prescribed method or the prescribed flexibility or options that you have in it. The one thing that I absolutely hate hearing is when I ask students why something is, especially on the project, not so much on the assignments. The assignments, you're still learning the stuff, right? But on the projects, you know, hopefully you've done enough work that you know a little bit about customizing the framework and those sort of things. So I, I don't like when I get the answer when I ask students why they did something that way. The answer, that's how ASP.NET does it, right? That's not a good answer in my book to say, well, I did it that way because that's how ASP.NET does it. ASP.NET isn't getting the grade in this class. I'm not grading ASP.NET. Um, when you get a job doing this, ASP.NET is not getting your paycheck. You're getting your paycheck, right? That would be analogous to having a table that a carpenter hand built for you. And you look at it and say, why does the table look like this? It looks horrible. You know, maybe there's like six legs or something like that on it. And the carpenter said, well, that's the way the hammer wanted to build the table. What? What? You know? Hammers don't build tables. Carpenters build tables. To be sure, they use tools in doing that. But it's the carpenter that uses the tool, not the tool dictating how something's going to be done. All right? Same idea here. You're the programmer, all right? So it's your job to make 
the page work in a good, logical, optimized, best possible way. All right? And if the default behavior of the simplest thing does that for you, great. You got lucky. All right? Good for you. If, if a grid view works for you and does most of what you wanted it to do, that's awesome. All right? The tool did a lot of work for you then. But if it doesn't work for you and you want to do something else, you should know what your options are. So what we're going to do today and maybe a little bit on uh, whatever the next day we meet is, Thursday, um, is look at the data list and the repeater. I have to confess, it's been a while since I used these. So this could be fun. All right? Okay. So, you know, maybe you can post a video. Uh, may, maybe I'll do something viral worthy in this video and you can post it. So pay attention. You might, might be in for some laughs. All right? I'm going to start off, we're going to move this direction. I'm going to start off using a data list. And we'll see what we can do with a data list that we can't do with a grid view. It might take a little bit more work, but we have more flexibility. Like I said before, and this is an important lesson to learn, this is not the facts of life in ASP.NET. This is the facts of life anytime you use a framework. If you use jQuery, jQuery is a framework. If you use um, you know, any of the, the JavaScript uh, um, frameworks that are available, um, Again, if you're working on uh, iPhone development or you're working on um, Android development, this is the way it is. Something in the framework does it easy. Something, an option where you can do it yourself. And in the middle there, <coughs> sometimes there's other options. So let's go here. And let me create another test page. There's another person in the room that knows a lot about stuff, by the way, and that is Google. So let's Google ASP.NET grid view versus list view. Oh, looky here. Wow. It's almost like there's people here that, that just make pages for me to use in class, right? Grid view versus list view. What are the advantages of using list view over grid view? I need pagination, editing rows, inserting rows. Seems a grid view does not support data pager. What do I sacrifice? Grid view supports this. The reason to use a list view would be if you need a special layout. To create a table that places more than one item in the same row, break free a basic table, uh, uh, which is not possible. The grid view is easier and faster. Okay, so again, uh, the, the bottom line is that grid view is perfectly fine if you want a simple table with one row per record. If you want to combine rows into a table or you want some other way of displaying it, use a list view. This article is particularly useful. Notice a couple of these. The repeater, for example, you can't do updates and deletes. But you can have a flexible layout. Let's go and let's try to make one of these. 
I'm going to go and I'm going to put my SQL data source on here. Configure. And I'm going to go and put Yes, there's another one, a, day, a list view and a data list. Interesting. I missed the one. Let's try putting a list view on here. All right. Choose data source. SQL data source one. All right. Configure list view. Wow, look what I got. Wow. All right. <coughs> Let's just sit back and think how much Bill Gates must have loved us to give us all these options. First of all, we have a grid layout, which is kind of what we get with the grid view. We can have a tiled layout. All right, that's showing what it's going to look like. That's the, that would be sort of the canvas look, all right? where we have, um, you know, instead of, how do I want to say this, instead of having a table with rows and columns, we have tiles of things. So one piece would be in one tile, another piece would be in another tile. These layouts, by the way, are becoming extremely popular in mobile applications. Um, I, I see these an awful lot, so I, I would think that that would be a good one. The nice thing about these is, like, depending on the page width, um, you, uh, you know, it looks different ways on different um, devices. So, like, let's go and look at Canvas real quickly. Um, let me log on to that. So, notice that this isn't a particularly big monitor. All right, so I only get like one tile per, I have a column of one tile. If I had a real big monitor, I would get like, like when I work on my laptop, I would get maybe three tiles going across. And if we go and view this on a mobile device, let's, let's simulate this. Doesn't look bad even on a mobile device. Okay. Since we're playing around with this, let's go and do this. Oh, we even get a style. What do you think I'm going to say about this? Probably going to say don't use this, right? Because what am I going to suggest that you use? CSS. So I'm going to say no formatting. And I wonder where I can delete the columns. Let's let's see. Okay, there I've configured it. And let's run it. Why in pizza? Start page. Wrong start page. Take two. That's what I need. I need someone to come out after there's like a flub like that, like with the little clapboard. Data list. Take two. Pardon me? Yeah, it's kind of neat. 
You don't like the way it looks specifically? Guess what? You have CSS. And how are you going to make your CSS work with this? What do you think I'm going to say to do next to make the CSS work? Like, let's say, for example, I want space between these things. And uh, maybe I want a different font or whatever. Google. Well, Google, yeah. But first thing we're going to do is I'm going to look at the source of this, right? Because remember with CSS, you have to have a hook to hook your CSS to. Your CSS has to relate to, to, to each HTML element. And what are your choices? Basically, your choices are, number one, uh, the HTML tag. Are these in a special HTML tag? Are these sections? Are these divs? All right. Class. Do these all have a certain class? All right. Uh, what would the next thing be? ID. Is there a certain ID? that I can latch on to. And then, there is a combination of all those. For example, this whole thing might be a big giant container that has a certain ID, and then I would apply a style rule to the divs within that ID. But I can I could sit here and speculating forever, right? What's the easy way to do this? Well, let's look at the source. And I do not like the fact that it displays it in a little window down there. I guess I can maximize that. All right. Okay, I'm going to, I want to zoom. How do I zoom? Can I zoom? I'm going to make a statement here, and you are going to respond to me as though you are Bill Gates. Okay, so that's the challenge. I don't like the fact that it put my stuff in a table, because notice that's what it did. My list view has a... It is in a table. There's a table, and each row is, there's a, there, each TD is one record from my database. So this is a TD, this is a TD, this is a TD. So I have as many TDs as I have specialty pizzas. So I have six specialty pizzas, so I have six TDs, and there's three of them per row. I don't like the fact that they use a table for that. All right, Mr. Bill Gates, what do you respond? That, that is correct. What did, what, is, what did I write on the board that is another valid response? Do write your code. own expletive code, right? Again, this is what you get. This is how it does it. And if you don't like it, then don't use it. You can do that. It's a balancing act with all these things, right? There's a way that in your mind, the perfect vision of what the code should look like, right? And it's a matter of how you're going to get there. Now, if you, the fact that it's in a table poses some issues, some accessibility issues, probably, uh, maybe some other issues. But guess what? If it, if it is like one quarter of the time than writing it yourself, you'll figure out a workaround for those accessibility issues. All right? And... That's just sort of the, the facts uh, of life on that, all right? And if it absolutely is something that you can't work around and you absolutely don't like the table, then do use another method, probably the repeater, which uh, I don't think we'll get to today. We'll probably uh, get to next time. Anyhow, on the styling, we see what the HTML is now, so we can write code for it. So I can say this. We're going to create a style sheet. File. 
file, new file, style sheet. Oh, I already have a style sheet. so lazy here, I just want to copy and paste the style sheet code. There we go. So I'm going to paste my style sheet code in here. By the way, and saw that it's making TDs for each thing and I would have had a pretty good idea that that is um, that it, it renders this as a table because TDs go with tables all right and look those those uh, um, this does something else too what if no data is returned there's a no data return thing when all right so, what do I want to do in the style sheet? Let's make, let's put a border around each of these. So I'm going to go in my style sheet. I didn't want to do that. I want this ID. to get the ID from the HTML. Even though you can see things from the um, ASP.NET code, I generally prefer to look at the HTML. Um, simply because you can also miss things. So this is the ID I want. So I'll go into my style sheet and I'll say pound sign this, TD. What does that mean in CSS? Pound sign, list view, blah, 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 space TD. What does a pound sign mean? Or if you prefer hashtag. Or if you anything with the ID of this view. Yeah, anything with that as an ID is the first thing that we use to select this. What does a space T D afterwards mean? It's focusing in on that specific element. That specific element. So any T D within something that has that ID. So we're zeroing in. Remember the first part of a style rule is what's called the selector. It determines what gets this style. All right. In this case, what gets the style? The TDs that are within the thing that has the ID of list view one underscore group placeholder container. So what am I going to do with these? I'm going to make the width of these 30%. Minimum width, uh, let's say 150 pixels, um, border, two pixel, solid, pound sign, C, 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 C. Okay. What color is that? Indeed. I would say we, we, we have an answer. We don't have a specific answer, but we have an answer. It's a shade of gray. How do I know it's a shade of gray? 
because each of these pairs are the same. So there's equal amounts of red, green, and blue in it. Anytime you have equal amounts of red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue is on the white to black continuum, right? Or black to white continuum. If those numbers are low, it's closer to black. If those numbers are high, it's closer to white. So CC, remember the digits in hexadecimal go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C. So C is a pretty high digit. So CC would be a pretty high digit. So therefore, this would be a light shade of gray. All right? Um, as I've joked in classes to underwhelming response, there are actually 254 shades of gray. Wow. All right? Because you go from 0, 1 to FE. And if you count on your fingers and toes, that comes out to 254. All right. So, now you know. Cool. So let's go and run this. And there we have that. Um, actually, what I want to do, it's not quite exactly what I expected. Oh, crap. I want to make this have a width of 100%. Remember, your, your style can interfere or the .NET stuff can interfere with the styles you're trying to create. All right, which is what's happening here. Yeah, I don't think that's causing me grief, but you're right, I do need a semicolon. Let's look at the code here. I don't know why it's not taking up 100% of the page. We'll just we'll just have to leave that as a mystery. Gonna have to. And as I make it smaller. We could probably look at the properties of this and find out what's going on, but what I did. Right. The table is list view one group placeholder container. Okay, so you don't have to put the word tables? No. Okay. Uh, anyhow, we could, uh, that's something if you're truly interested, you can um, figure out. All right, one thing we're going to try to do um, each, uh, uh, skip that, skip that, rewind. Let's look and see what some of our other options are for this. Tile, we have a bulleted list. We have a flow layout, and we have a single row of stuff. Single row doesn't seem terribly useful to me, but I guess it could be in some. Bulleted list would be uh, interesting. Uh, I don't know if it would be particularly useful in this case. Um, flow, I think is going to be what I want. So I'm going to go and choose that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go and run this. All 
All right, let's look at the HTML. Still have list view one item. It's all done with spans and breaks. What do I do every time I see a break tag? I scream and I die a little. All right? Do not use break tags. Now, why do I say not use break tags? Why do I say not use break tags? What is a break tag, first of all? Yes? It like, starts a new line. Starts a new line. All right. Why, so why do I say not to use one? What content does a break tag add to the page? No content. No content. It's only what? I think you said it, but I didn't quite... Uh, it's only visual. It's only appearance. Right? So, an HTML tag that controls appearance. What is that? It should be in CSS. It's disgusting because it should be in CSS. Right? <laughs> you don't use HTML to control the appearance. Because now, what if I want those things side by side? I have the stupid break tags in there. But you know what? I'm not to be defeated. All right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to beat it with CSS, I think. Break tag is a block tag, if I think I'm correct, because that's exactly what it does. It puts a break in. So I'm going to tell to treat the break tags as inline tags. And I'll bet you this will correct it. Yoda does say that, and if he were running this class, then he would know the right answer and would do it. But <laughs> remember, remember Halloween, and it didn't defeat it again. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, yeah, uh, I was only Obi-Wan, so Obi-Wan is allowed to try, all right? Uh, but we should be able to do something with CSS. Maybe this. There we go. All right. That does it the way that I, that's, that's putting us in the right direction, anyhow. Now, there's still some work I have to do on this, but that, you know, I could then, I could then probably style it. And if I couldn't beat it by styling it, guess what? Write your own code. All right. Bottom line with all these is that um, you have things that the framework does that are more or less easy to do, that are more or less flexible to do, all right? And you can always tweak them a little bit. And then the next step is to write your own code if that doesn't work. Yes? Um, what is the advantage to keeping the break tags versus just deleting them all together? Uh, good question. Can I delete them? Or is that something that the framework put in? Excellent question. Oh, I'm at the wrong one. So let's get rid of the CSS. Let's see if you can do that. You might be right. I may have panicked. See what happens? I see a break tag and I just lose my head. We don't have options in here, but we do have options in source. Ah, looky here. Those break tags are actually here. So I can go and I can get rid of them. So maybe I only want to see the pizza name. I could get rid of this. Let's say name and image. So 
So I could get an alternating uh, um, item, edit item. I'm not going to ever edit this, so I'm going to get rid of the edit item template. That was a, a very good point. Essentially, in a list view, everything's a template column. So remember, in the grid view, you had those template columns that you could edit. Here, everything is a template column. You can go in and you can tweak the HTML in that template. Alternating item, I'm going to make like this. Just going to copy the item template. All right. Hey, I'm moving in the right direction now. All right. Because I can do this. my CSS, I can say span, minimum width, blah, 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 float left. All right, um, we'll pick up on this on next time. And then we'll also look at the next step up, the repeater view. All right. But the idea here is we have so much more flexibility than we had previously. All right. Instead of being tied to a table, we now have a lot more control over what it is that we want to do. <coughs> I'm going to actually try to correct this. Um, so I will not be posting an incorrect example, and then we can talk about it next time uh, if I do in fact correct it. Um, and if not, um, then I don't know, I guess, I guess it will give us something to talk about. Yep. All right. I do need, can I borrow a thumb drive from someone?